Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share yet another update on my experience with the HP Omen 17 for 2021. Now, this laptop is very hard to find. Currently at Best Buy, which I'll include a link in the description, it is sold out, and HP has pulled it uh, from their site, but I'm sure it will come back sooner or later. In the interim, let's continue with the coverage. Now, in my previous video, I discussed upgrading the NVMe drives. I've taken the liberty of removing the back panel so that you can get a look inside of this beast. And it is a really, really nice machine. I mean, top to bottom, I feel like HP went above and beyond with this redesign and uh, the inclusion of copper heat sinks with uh, thermal pads uh, is just a really nice touch. Now, I went ahead and removed the original uh, stock Samsung 980 Pro, which is a phenomenal uh, Gen 4 drive. I pulled that out because one terabyte, at least for my taste, just isn't large enough. So, you know, I think for the majority of you, you're going to be happy with this. But if you want to make the upgrade, what I did was I threw in a four terabyte uh, Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. This is the two terabyte version. And I'll include links to all of these drives in the description. And so right now I'm sporting a four terabyte, again, of the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus in the Gen 4 drive, and then an eight terabyte Rocket Q in the secondary drive. And you can see these are the two drives respectively. Now, today's video though, isn't about that. It's about the RAM. And that's because stock, this comes with 16 gigs, at least this specific build, uh, 16 gigs of Samsung uh, DDR4 3200 uh, RAM. And I decided, why not give it a shot? Let's see what 64 gigs runs like. Now, I haven't done that much testing. A little bit of benchmarking numbers are very similar. And that's because most of the benchmarking I've done is gaming related, where I really anticipate uh, seeing a difference here is not with gaming, but uh, with video editing. Uh, that's where I expect to see some tangible gains, uh, but you know we're not there yet. So you may have noticed I've already popped in uh, each of the six, uh, rather 32 gig dims, and this is the exact same RAM. Uh, for those of you that followed my G15 uh, upgrade update, uh, the exact same RAM that I purchased for that machine. So it wasn't so complicated. Basically, I just grabbed another one of these. I'll include a link in the description. You're looking at about 150 uh, through Amazon, and that's where I purchased it. Got it within one day. That's why this video is so quick. So I pulled the 32 gig DIMM that was inside my G15. Of course, bought another one, totaling out to two, and they are now in there. Really easy to install. Uh, and I figured some of you may want to actually see the inside of this monster because it is a really nice machine. I mean, all around, again, build quality is excellent. The fact that they took the time and effort to make sure that uh, you could really truly upgrade the NVMEs, I really appreciate because while most gaming laptops these days have two slots, they don't actually necessarily mean that you're going to be able to use whatever you want. In fact, the eight terabyte Rocket Q that I have in here could not work in any laptop that I've tested uh, thus far. Just to give you a look so you can actually see these drives, um, but oh, almost brought a screw with that. And I'm gonna close this back up when I'm done. Just a quick peek. Again, only one of the NVMe slots is Gen 4 compatible. The other one is Gen 3. And the fact of the matter is I really love that they went out of their way to do this. So you can see right here, as I remove it, is the eight terabyte. You can see that. Go ahead, slot that back in. This is the Gen 3 drive. That's why the eight terabyte is in there. And I should be able to get this right back on. The heatsink just snaps right in. So let's see if I can just, well, I'm gonna have to do them separately. And for anyone that's wondering, you're now gonna see the actual install process. So you get that on. And let me go ahead and put the screw down. Once you have that seated, it's just a matter of getting this to line up. And actually pre-installed, there was plastic on here to protect the thermal pad. Uh, but again, I really appreciate that they went out of their way to do this because these drives really do need heat sinks. If you know anything about uh, these NVMEs, you know that they get hot really fast. And if they don't have uh, proper cooling or heat dissipation, I should really say, it's just not gonna work out. Now, excuse the fact that I can't really see a lot here since it isn't right in front of me and as much as i'd love to say i'm just going to look at 
what I've got on my preview monitor. It's still not so easy to do this at the same time, but hopefully I'll line it up and we'll get it screwed back in. And then I'll give you a quick look. You always wanna make sure you're grounded, by the way, before you mess around with stuff like this. Do not uh, take the risk of cooking uh, your laptop. So it looks like it's seated properly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Rocket uh, 4 Plus. Again, this is a four terabyte drive and everything's been working beautifully. Um, really desktop performance out of a laptop. And we're talking about 2021. Now, is this gonna stand up to my, you know, the HP Omen 30L that I reviewed a while back? No, it's, that's not the sort of performance we're getting here, but we are still getting really impressive uh, overall performance. So in Time Spy, this is still consistently benching uh, over 11,000. Any game you throw at this, you're going to see run um, pretty much at ultra. Um, and you're going to pull anywhere between 40 and 60 frames per second, which I think is really good. Um, no question in my mind, nothing to be upset about there. It's just um, something I didn't really imagine seeing from a laptop at any point, let alone here in 2021, because, you know, there was a lot of talk about how, you know, the 3070 and 3080s weren't really enough to do the job. And... Well, these machines have proven otherwise, in my opinion. So, looks like I'm lined up, but let's let's see once I get the screw in there. Again, don't have the best line of sight with this, but it will have to do for our purposes. I'd rather be directly over this, but you can't win them all. And if it's not threading, when in doubt, pull it out. Insert your joke. There we go. And we got it, because you don't want to strip anything. Hopefully I didn't do any damage there. Everything looks secure. And now for the RAM, again, stock uh, 16 gig. These are the SAMI DIMMs that were included. You know, pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. And look, 16 gigs of RAM is still going to be enough for the majority of what most users will do. But if you're going to use this for photo and video editing, as well as you know, rendering, anything working with uh, programs like Revit, AutoCAD, not so much, but you know, really intensive uh, pieces of software. That's where I say, why not have more RAM and not worry about needing it? Uh, it's not an expensive upgrade. Again, you're looking at 150 a DIMM. Uh, when you're talking about a $2,000 machine, an extra 300 bucks shouldn't be breaking the bank. Uh, and at the time of configuration, I do not believe that HP actually offered this. So just a reminder of how simple this is. You're just gonna pull the two clips, the dims pop up, and that's really the whole deal. So it's just a matter of removing them like I did right there. And again, links will be in the description to these crucial 32 gig uh, dims. And you just you know pop it right back in. And that's part of the reason I'm doing this. I wanted everyone to have a guide. Of course, this has reverse orientation. So your sticker is going to be on the other side, the side facing down. Just gonna go ahead and slot that in and then put pressure on the edges at the top. Once you see you've snapped in on both sides, you're good to go. Again, making sure these are secure. Now the eight terabyte drive is pretty thick. So when it's on here, it actually is a little bit higher. It's a little raised up, but that's inherent. It's just because it's an eight terabyte NVMe. It's the way it's stacked. Um, you know, a lot of these drives these days, like the Samsung uh, 980 Pro are just incredibly thin, incredibly thin. Uh, that's not the case when you start getting into the four and eight terabyte drives. Uh, but highly recommend Sabrent. Uh, they are a great company. I've been reviewing their products for a while now and nothing but good things so far. So let's go ahead and close this thing up. And then I will show you what the, the numbers look like because I actually left the benchmarks in place. And opening it and closing it, I mean, closing it is easier than opening it. Um, you're essentially going to want to go around the machine once you take out the Phillips uh, screws with a guitar pick. Um, if you buy one of the iFixit uh, kits, uh, then, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You, you're going to need a few of them, really, to get under and around this thing because there are so many uh, points of retention that it connects on. So, you know, some have more than others, some have fewer. This is one of those that really has a lot, and that's why I'm continuing to go around and just make sure I snap in all the pry points um, so, you know, if it's your first time taking it off, just be careful. You don't want to break anything. Again, I don't know how many of you actually have this, but food for thought. And I just, I keep the screws right here 
in the top of the actual, don't need that ram in there, but in the top of the lid for the, the, uh, the kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side. Let's just screw those back in. And then I will boot this sucker up and you'll see. I mean, again, I really think this is right now my personal favorite on the market when it comes to um, desktop replacements. I mean, the i9 versus the i7, clearly you do not need to go to the i9. The performance difference is not much. So, you know, if you're looking at this and you're trying to emulate the build that I'm reviewing, don't worry about it. The, the i7 is still great. And the big advantage, at least in my opinion, to going Intel versus AMD in a build like this, and AMD has done phenomenal things this year, is that you do get the advantage of having Gen 4 NVMEs. And, you know, some people will make the argument that it's, it's really, you know, non-existent in terms of a recognizable uh, true difference. And I get it. I mean, I know where they're coming from. Uh, but at the same time, I would rather have Gen 4 capability than not have it. I don't think it's a bragging right to, to say you can only have Gen 3. And that's not to say that Gen 3 isn't great. It is. Uh, performance is excellent. But it's still, you know, a matter of what are you looking for? You know, I personally would like to have the fastest storage uh, that I can get, and that's exactly what you end up with. Let me flip this around uh, with Intel, and that's that is Intel's big bragging point right now is that if you go with one of their builds, not only can you still have Thunderbolt 4, some pry points still popping in here, but you'll also have the benefit of the fastest storage in the business. So I'm all for it. I mean, Gen 4 has been on the market for a little while now, but you know, support finding the right systems for it that's been a little bit tougher. So that's why I'm really happy to actually have an option. And that's exactly what we uh, have here with the Omen. Now, this isn't the only machine on the market with Gen 4 support. I've covered a lot of Ultrabooks. Um, there are other gaming laptops, but um, I don't think anything is as powerful as the Omen 7, 17 right now here in 2021. I might be wrong. Uh, go ahead and drop a comment if you're aware of something more powerful than this combo again. Uh, the 11th Gen i9 uh, with the RTX 37, uh, 3070 at full power, and now with 12 terabytes of storage. I mean, to give you an idea, in Time Spy, again, a little over 11,000 with this machine, uh, whereas with the Omen 30L with a 3090, okay, with a 3090, we're talking about uh, somewhere between 17 and 20,000 in Time Spy. But uh, to me, the beauty here, as opposed to something like my G15, which I love, this does kind of make the G15 feel like an Ultrabook. And I say that because when it comes to rendering video, uh, essentially, you know, the G15 renders in just about real time with 4K uh, 60 frame per second content from my FX3 that I'm filming on. Uh, put it in a machine like this, it renders beyond real time. I mean, it has about a 25 to 30% boost on that. This looks like it may be threaded at an angle, so I just want to make sure we're good. Don't want to tighten these up too much. You never know. One's sticking out a little bit, but I'm not worried. Let's go ahead and flip it over. I think everything is secure. See, things are still popping. A little bit of dust there. This machine is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but it's also a beast. So let me go ahead, open this up. I think it's going to prompt me for my login. So let me just throw my pin. The fans are kicking up because when I was benching, I did have the fan profile. Um, manual at the max hopefully this thing wakes up properly it should fans are certainly going see if I can get in here should just wake up come on let's go we went through enough right Still waiting. And another really nice thing about this machine is the keyboard. Um, really one of the best in the business. If you follow my channel, you already know that I love HP's keyboards. You know, then factor in that you've got per key RGB, if that's your thing. No numerical keypad, but still a really nice system. Looks like it's going to make me do a hard boot. It's probably because I pulled the NVMEs and this was in a sleep state. Um, so, if I have to, I will. Shouldn't have to, but it may be necessary at this point. 
and I'll just go ahead and boot it up again. But uh, where things stood presently was that I was getting over 11,000 in Time Spy. Should boot now. And uh, I used a few other benchmarking uh, pieces of software, but you know I will have to put it through some more tests. But uh, the headroom is definitely valuable to me. Again, I'm not saying this is an upgrade for everyone, but if this is going to be your desktop, which I think for many of you out there it is, I don't really see a reason not to go this route. So just uh, food for thought. Let me go ahead and just plug that in. Again, we're not going to have the benchmarks anymore, which I should have seen coming. That was fairly obvious. But there we have it. And we're back to basics. Uh, so give you a little bit of a wider shot here. And yeah, it's just, it's a monster of a machine. No question about it. And the fans are, are going to town. You know, it's still really just a fantastic piece of hardware. Really nice kit. Um, I love what HP's done here. So credit where it's due. The Omen 17 for 2021 is an absolute beast. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.